Welcome to another edition of Ask Excite. I'm Tim Bushnell with Expert Cytometry. Today's question comes from Scott, and Scott asks, what is a universal negative, and how does this work for compensation? Now, that's a great question. Remember, the second rule of compensation requires that the carriers for the positive and the negative controls have the same autofluorescent background. The idea behind the universal negative is that you collect a single sample that represents the negative, the autofluorescent background, of your carriers. Now, if you only have beads or only have cells, then a universal negative can be used. However, if you have a mixture of beads and cells, such as um, beads for the antibodies and cells for something like DAPI or GFP, then you cannot use a universal negative and in fact should have a positive and a negative sample for each control. In fact, the best practice is, is to recommend that you have a positive and a negative sam uh, sample in each of your conf compensation controls so that the samples are treated identically through the staining process and therefore give you the best control for addressing the background fluorescence for compensation. Thanks for another Ask Excite. Until next time, be sure to keep up with your flow cytometry best practices right here with your friends in flow, Tim and Team Excite.